Right, so we're back with part two of this week's change log. Didn't make a whole lot of changes this week. Let's go with Brego, where I decided to make one change. Let me just find the card that I actually put in and I'll show you what I took out and explain why. Of course it would be in the section I didn't grab. In case you're wondering, this is how I store my commander decks. They are double sleeved, ready to play. This is Animar, surprise motherfucker uh, Morph Eldrazi. This is Azami, Lady of Scrolls, Tribal Wizards. This is Brigo slot. Let's see if this is the card that I. Nope. Brigo is Tribal Clones. He's still got some of the stacks pieces, as in Liv Lilia, eh, Lavinia of the Tenth, but it's no longer the stack deck it used to be, and is now Tribal Clones. This is Edgar Markov, Tribal Vampires. And this is Edric, Lord of Trust. And what I do is normally I would have a... Some of you might may not have seen them, actually. I have an old starter deck box that they used to sell magic cards in. And I pack it with basic lands in order to compress the decks. For this, because what I'll do is I'll take the whole box with me when I go play. To compress the decks and take up the space, there's about... 60 cards worth of space with five decks. It's not enough for six decks. And these are the tokens for Edgar that I made myself. Sleeved up, ready to play. Edgar himself, he makes these 1 1 vampires. That's her by artist Red, Red Obium. Soren, Lord of Innistrad. He makes these 1-1 one, one life linkers. So I've got these 1-1 one, one life link uh, tokens. And then... Oh, what the hell is he? <laughs> I hate it when I can't remember the name when I'm alive. But there's... Um, let's just find him so I can... Where is that idiot? Anyway, I'm veering pretty far off from the purpose of this video. Where the hell is that guy? Come on. Dun, 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 dun. I know what he looks like. I just can't remember the name offhand. Yeah, Soren Lord of Innistrad, so he makes those 1-1 one, one lifelink vampire tokens. Bloodline Keeper. That's the dude. So I can put a 2-2 two, two black vampire creature token flying onto the battlefield. And I can keep doing it. So that's why there's a, a good number of those 2-2 two, two flying vampire tokens. Is because no matter how he's flipped, I can keep tapping him to make those vampires. Let's put these away and get back to what I was talking about. So, Brigo. <clears throat> the change did not start with Brigo. It started because I had three copies of this card. It's not there. One is in Phoenix, and the other two were just sitting in my art binder, and I thought, I really should play that card. It's a, it's a good card. It's effective. There's probably something I can take. There it is. Brago got a Ristic Study. I had this Commander's Arsenal foil just sitting in my art binder, because I really didn't... Uh, have anything planned for it. 
it doesn't go in Shroom. Shroom doesn't need it. Uh, it doesn't go in Rafik Enchantress because I'm drawing a lot more cards. I, I don't really need this. Um, there's a lot better enchantments to play in that deck. It doesn't go in NMR because there's already a lot of card draw in that deck and it's not a creature. NMR has minimal creatures. Edric, akin to Sharum, akin to Animar, he doesn't need it because every time I hit somebody with the, uh, one of the creatures and I'm pumping out lots of small creatures in order to keep this going, I'm drawing far more cards than, uh, than this would ever give me. But in Brigo, this should be good. Two colors, one blue. Whenever anybody casts a, an opponent casts a spell, whenever an opponent casts a spell, they either tax themselves for one, or I get to draw a card. It gets kind of annoying sometimes whenever anybody casts a spell and you're going, trigger, trigger, trigger. Do you pay one? Do you pay one? Do you pay one? No? You? You going to pay one? No? Nope? Okay, thank you. What I took it out for, or what I replaced it with, what I took out for it, is Tefiri. The reason I took Tefiri out, so he costs one more. The choose up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land. Untap the ones I control, tap the ones I don't control. In the games I've played, it hasn't mattered. Sure, I, I still gained two life, but I've got other ways of gaining life in Brego. It's not that relevant. Since I'm doing this on my turn, I can't tap down a, a possible attacker. Okay, I, I tap m one of my opponent's creatures, they still untap on the turn, they can attack with it. It doesn't give me enough of a uh, advantage. Maybe I'm playing it wrong, you tell me in the comments, but I just don't see it. Look at the top three cards from the library, put one of them in my hand, and the rest in the bottom of my library in any order for neg two on Tefiri. Okay, if I've got Rhystic Study, I should be reliably drawing more cards. Yes, I don't get to filter the top three, but I do get to just draw. And I don't have to worry about doing it uh, on my turn. Maybe that's better than I think it is. The few times I've tried it, it's been okay. And what? The real reason I wanted him is the ultimate. So untap, I get an emblem with untap all permanents I control during everybody's untap step. So I untap with everybody when they untap and I draw with everybody during their draw step. That's, that's good. It takes three turns to get that though. And that's one of those emblems that makes people think, we need to kill Tefiri. So he becomes a target, he becomes an object of destruction. Uh, they will go out of the way to kill him, so I will not get the ultimate. With Brego, the other thing is I can keep doing the Neg 2. Flicker him with Brego, he comes back as a new object. So then I can plus one him. So in practice, even though I wanted him to try to get to the ultimate, I was never really getting to it because either he was being attacked and losing loyalty or I was doing the neg two to filter the top three and then flickering him and then he'd come back at five, resetting him. For that reason, uh, Tefiri came out, Risk Study came in. I'll see how it goes, see if it's any better. Next change log. Last one for this week. Carthus, Tyrant of Jund. Carthus is a decoy commander. The deck is tribal elves. Carthus is in there as air support. And what I realized is I really need some way of did I take out for this? Actually, this is not the last change I made. <laughs> anyway, I was uh, 
trying to think of another way to slow my opponents down to give me the time I need to cast my elves to build up the critical mass with coat of arms with dumping elves into play using Alluren um, and using triggers that every time I cast a creature I draw a card so the idea is I continuously draw cards continuously cast creatures and just uh, dump most of my deck into play and what I need is some way of slowing my opponents down this works in Edric in fact this came out of Edric I uh, was thinking how good this works in Edric and it should work pretty good with Karthus and went on MKM to order a new one because I only have one copy Winter Orb and ordered a Black Border German Winter Orb which is called Frostbringer so that's cool uh, Edric in uh, about a week or so should have a Black Border 4th edition German Winter Orb with Frostbringer as its name but with uh, Karthus, since I've got so many mana elves, me not being able to tap my lands shouldn't matter, just like it doesn't with Edric. But for everybody else, it should matter and should slow them down and give me time to uh, achieve my goals. Now, what did I take out for it? What I just opened, this is a box of cards I have as essentially my sideboard. If I'm playing a commander game and something isn't working as well as I hope or I realize I want to play something else or maybe the deck as with um, Azami, I have the Supreme Inquisitor and it's just too mean. Uh, if I've got 10 wizards and I've got ways to untap them I can just exile the crap out of somebody's library and wreck them. It's so brutal, so backbreaking, that I do not have this in the main deck, but if somebody wants to play a high high power game, I have this with me in order to to utilize it. Same with her. <laughs> Nobody likes it when people have a, some kind of cycle take other turns, extra turns, but I have it. Anyway, for Karthus, I took out Rapid Vigor for the Winter Orb. The reason behind it is I have Heroic Intervention to stop, um, recover from a, a board wipe. So, um, Heroic Intervention, I have Color of the Claw, that if a lot of my elves die, I could put two two bears into play for each elf that died that turn. I also have Prowess of the Fair, where if all my non-token elves die, I still get token elves at the end of turn. And of course, neither one of those cards are where I want to see them, so I can show them rapidly. There we go, Prowess of the Fair. Whenever another non-token elf is put in my graveyard from play, I may put a 1-1 one, one green Elf Warrior creature token in play. So that protects me from board wipes. This recovers from board wipes. Each creature chooses a creature type. Hey, elves for me. Puts them from the graveyard onto the battlefield. Where is my Collar of the Claw? Collar of the Claw. So it's, it's, it's all elves. Um, the each non-token creature kind of doesn't matter. And it doesn't give me elves, it gives me bears. But if I have coat of arms, and let's say 10 creatures, 10 creatures die, I get 10 2 2 bears. So with coat of arms, there are 11 11s. Thinking about all the things I had to recover from bird wipes in the deck, it didn't seem like rap and vigor was that interesting. Also, because rap and vigor cannot do anything about wrath of, wrath of God, damnation, any of the spells where the creatures can't regenerate. So for that reason, I took it out. Last change, and hopefully my camera doesn't cut off. I've only got a couple minutes, so I better hurry up and get this done. I don't want to have to have a part two just for 
this small change. <coughs> a friend of mine is playing his Muldratha, and he played a card I'd never seen before. Kaya's Gust Form. Enchant creature, planeswalker you control. Whenever it dies or is exiled, return to the battlefield under your control. So he was kept doing it with his Muldratha. Muldratha would die, and he'd get her back, and the first thing he would do once it's his turn on his first main phase is recast this using Muldratha's ability to re-enchant her. So she dies again, and it was, it was amazing. So that game, as soon as I got home that night, I went on Medcard Market and I ordered a full copy. I said, that's beautiful, I need that. And I took out Ram, Ramamnap, Ramamnap Excavator. Ramamnap. That's just one of those words that you don't expect it, that combination of syllables, so it's a bit hard to say. Anyway, I took him out because two in a green for two, three, with no other abilities. I could play land cards from my graveyard. Well, Muldratha does that for me. So I really don't need him. He comes down earlier than Muldratha, but the best I can hope for is maybe get another fetch land. Um, nothing else, no other lands really would have gone in the graveyard. Maybe I've uh, dredged a few times, but since he's just duplicating an ability that I'm going to try to get into play as quickly as possible by having Muldratha in play herself, and he does if he said play, I may play an additional land, and I may play land cards from her graveyard, that would be fantastic, but he doesn't. He's still cool, still going to keep him, but I think for Muldratha, Kai's Ghost Form is better. Anyway, that's the video for this week. Let me know what you think. What are the what changes would uh, would you have made? Do you think some of them are some of the ideas are lunacy that I made the wrong choices? Tell me. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>